Yeah, right. I know what's in you. I bet I'm out cold out there and we're seriously seeing all we can't do anything. I mean, I've been having like a little bit of a and happy deer opener. I'm glad most of you were here. Um, as for mine, they're hunting, so I'm also glad for that. So <laughs> join with us this morning as we worship.
was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and my God flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who calls me here below will be
Merry Christmas. Oh, wait, no. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're getting ready for that Merry Christmas, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that Todd and Sarah have, they walk around with a smile on their face the entire time. Every time I see them, it's a smile on their face this last couple of weeks. For some reason, they really like these Christmas songs. And you know, this year it's been kind of crazy because um, I've there's Stores that played started playing the Christmas music a little earlier. There's uh, the radio. Some of the stations that normally don't play till after Thanksgiving, they're playing it already. And and I could tell you, there's a lot of people that normally on normal years would have been like, really already, but this year they're pretty happy about it. This year, I we we can never have too much of Christ, right? But this year, it seems like folks are just that much hungrier than what they have been in the past, and so. Anyway, so what a wonderful, beautiful day. I'm so glad to have everyone here. Um, uh, in fact, it's, it's such a great God day that I want you to turn to the person next to you. Don't spit on them, but turn to the next person to you and say, I'm so glad you're here. God morning. And it's kind of hard for the people sitting by themselves and social distanced. So... But holler across the room, it's fine. So uh, i got a couple notes I want to share with you. we got some stuff. Hey, it, it's that time of year, right, when a lot of stuff is going on. So I'm going to share a couple notes with you. Um, Fifth Sunday Serve, I want to remind you, make sure we're still doing those cards, those letters, those, the pictures, the jokes, the whatever it is you're doing. Um, make sure if you, if you brought some today, just let me know. Just You can leave it on the counter back there. I'll get it to uh, uh, Good Sam's or Hiawatha Heights or whoever. Um, but just make sure we remember to, to man, you know, we're, we're going to have time, whether you choose or don't choose to be with family on Thanksgiving, at least it's your choice, right? Um, this week's going to be really hard on some folks because they don't have a choice. And so um, just please remember that as you're, as you're thinking, this week's easy, right? Because the other, like last week was like, well, you had to figure out what card you wanted, Right. Um, as what kind of card. This week, there's Thanksgiving cards. Just give them Thanksgiving cards and put a little encouragement in it with them. And, and the picture thing, don't be afraid of the picture thing. I found out they're really excited about that. They said the picture, because I, I sent a picture of the bride and I, you know, I just printed some off and, and put them in the card with them and whatever and, and sent them. So, uh, and, and, you know, they, they said it's really been, it's been a, big, a huge hit. Apparently, th- what they've done is they fold it in half so Joe's picture's behind and mine's showing. They had a real mouse problem in the kitchen out there, and they said it's not a problem anymore. So, you know, they, go ahead and send them pictures. Um, no, seriously, though, they said, you know, the, the residents just absolutely love having those pictures. So don't be afraid to send a picture. Um, and so anyway, so, so let's not forget that Fifth Sunday Serve isn't one time this month. It's all the rest of the month, okay? So we want to, and don't forget the, the caregivers that are there. We want to make sure we don't leave them out because you know what? They're sacrificing a ton of time 
uh, due to this the the current situation that we have, right? And so, um, so they they love those patients and or those residents, I mean, and they're they're taking care of them best they can. And so let's not forget them. Um, so and then uh, a couple other things with this time of year, then that means what we're we're, we're probably going to have to decorate a tree. And so uh, we were we were offered a tree. Um, Riverview called us up and it call, uh, sent me a text the other day and said. Sheldon, we've got a tree for you guys. Just come and pick it up. So they've given us another, a live tree again. So we're going to be putting that up up here um, next Saturday. We're going to uh, go get that and, and decorate the tree. So anyone who wants to help decorate it, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, show up. And so we're going to um, uh, go ahead and decorate the tree, all right? And then um, um, in December, which isn't as far away as it might seem, December 7th is the Christmas parade here in town. Uh, we're doing the parade. We're also going to have um, the Ministerial Association is doing uh, cider and cookies there. Well, Chamber of Commerce puts on the parade, but the Ministerial Association is going to give away um, hot, hot apple cider. We're going to put the cinnamon dots in it or the red hots or whatever you call it in it again. And so it's a little cinnamon like we did with the trunk or treat. Um, and so we're going to be giving out a bunch of hot apple cider, but then I'm going to recruit all of you, Okay. Um, well, okay, only about half of you probably because um, I want the ones who know how to bake. Okay, so um, uh, what we're going to do is we want to, we're going to do a free will offering and have bags of cookies there, okay? Um, not bags of cookies like the kids sat on them so it needs to be in a bag. But we're going to do bags of cookies with half a dozen cookies in there or whatever and, and so that we can take, they'll do a free will offering and we'll just give away the cookies that night and it's the minimal contact so we keep everyone at distance, right? We, we limit that, right? And so trying to raise some money. And what we're going to raise that money for is we've decided to raise money for two organizations here in town that are really, really busy right now. Um, and one is Toys for Tots. You all know Laurel that comes and sings, shares her beautiful voice and her beautiful talents with the guitar and everything else here, um, and shares her children <laughs> with us. And so um, she leads Toys for Tots here in town. And so she's in the process of gathering up funds to be able to buy the presents. She's going to also ask for volunteers to help wrap said presents. And uh, um, so that's right now. So we're going to do the, the money that we raise at that free will offering is going to half of it will go to Toys for Tots. So we can get these kids. That's for the kids who mom and dad are lucky if they can buy them that pack of underwear that you were so disgusted you got as a kid. Right? They're lucky that they can even afford it. They don't have any money. And so this is making sure these children that otherwise would not have a gift have a gift, right? Or would not have anything fun for sure, but most likely wouldn't have a gift. Um, and so the other thing is Love Inc. is going to get the other half of that money. So we're going to split that money, whatever it is. If it's 100 bucks, each gets 50 bucks. But let's hope, for, uh, my prayer is that we have a thousand bucks so we can give 500 to each and maybe 2,000 so we can give a thousand to each right and so whatever that works out to be so the more cookies you bake the more we can give away the more free will we can have right and so so that's December 7th it's a Monday night so on Sunday you'll be able to drop those cookies off here at the church if you if you want or Saturday or whatever well let me know if it's going to be Saturday so I'll make sure I'm here but but preferably on Sunday when you come to church bring those cookies folks online guess what you're not out of this I understand the social distancing. I understand that and the, and the protecting yourselves and others and whatever. But you could certainly make cookies. You can bag them up. It's minimal contact. I can wipe down the bags with a wipe or whatever. Um, and so, you know, we can, we can do that where you can be a part of this as well. So I don't want you to feel like you're being left out. You're certainly not. Um, and so all the pastors... Uh, in the ministerial association are talking to their congregations this morning the same way, all right? And so we're sharing that message. So hopefully we'll have hundreds of dozens of cookies that are there, right? And so that's the game plan. And so then also um, um, we're going to do the, I got to make sure I don't lose all my notes. Um, oh, there's a festival of trees that they're doing here in town also. That's another fundraiser. That one raises funds for the Chamber of Commerce, which does a lot of good things in this community. Um, and that's on uh, um, the 13th of December. There's going to be the, the open house for the uh, parade or the, the festival of trees. That'll be at the pack. It's a walkthrough thing. If you would like to put up a tree there, you're able to. Just contact Lisa down there at the chamber. Um, you'll be able to do that. And, and so that, again, is another, another way to help our community out. And in this year, it is a really challenging year for that. Um, Love, Inc., if, if you look on a table back there, I have some of these sheets back there. 
Um, it'll give you an idea as to what Love, Inc. has done so far this year, um, and you'll see why there's such a need for Love, Inc. Um, and if you don't know much about them, please just ask me about it. Um, so anyway, with that, um, that's what I have for announcements. Um, I think that's it. Um, I didn't talk to anyone. That, I missed one, did I? My good one's in there teaching right now, so she's, Steph's always reminding me. So um, so anyway, so there we are. Um, do we have any prayer requests this morning or praise, re- praise reports? Okay. All right. Please join me as we go to our Father. Dear Lord, thank you so very much. Thank you for this moment and this day. Thank you for what you've been doing, dear Lord. You do so much. A man, a living, we don't even know even close to a, just a morsel of what you do, dear Lord. Um, you're, you're behind, you're lifting up, you're, you're supporting, you're feeding, you're helping, dear Lord, and we're so grateful for it. And today as we gather here, we ask that you would, you would take, take Satan out of the equation, get him out of the equation, get him out of here, dear Lord. Don't allow him to have any place in here. He has no right being here. He has no place here. We do not have a, a safe haven for him here. That, Lord, you would just evict him in this moment right now, kick him out. He may not, Satan, you cannot stay, you must leave. Jesus Christ said we have the authority to evict you, and you're evicted. Now, Father, I just ask that as you've evicted Satan, as you've opened up places in our hearts, Lord, we ask that you would just fill that, fill those voids with your Holy Spirit, your love, your, your guidance, dear Lord. Fill with your Holy Spirit all those voids. And Lord, we just uh, ask that as this message is delivered today, that this would be the message that you desire, that I would not have any, I, I would not taint the message. It would strictly be your message. And Lord, that, that our hearts would not taint the message and we would receive it as you desire for us to receive it. And so Lord, we just look forward to what you do today in this message and through this message and through us, through us gathered here today as your body, as your bride. And Lord, we just pray these things in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And if you would join me in the prayer that our Savior taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to sit in 1 Samuel 18 quite a bit. 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 through 6, uh, 1 through 16, excuse me. Um, after David had finished talking to, with Saul, Jonathan became one in the spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. When the men were returning home with, after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out, of the, out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. With joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres, as they, as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain, refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but, but me with only thousands. What more, can he get, what more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully over Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David but had departed from Saul. So he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns. In everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. 
But all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns. So what do your friends call you? When do your friends call you? And what do your friends call you for when they call you? I won't say, we're, we're going to talk about friendships today. And, and, and I won't say that all people want something from you, but I'll say most people want something from you. Most people are wanting something from you. They want, they want your favors, they want your money, they want your applause, they want your approval, they want, they want something from you. Most people are looking to get something from those around them. Your neighbor, he wants your lawnmower. Your kids want your inheritance. Your spouse wants you to take care of them. Everyone wants something from somebody. Bottom line is this. Most people want to find out, when they get to know you, they want to find out about you, what it is they can get from you when they want it. That's what most people want. It's just, it's just true. I mean, think about it. Uh, uh, you're a plumber? Oh, let me file that away in the old bank up here so that when I need a plumber, I can call you. <laughs> or ask my son-in-law, you're an electrician? <laughs> let me file that away because I don't like electricity. Right? You're a mechanic? Oh, let me put that in the old memory bank here so I can make sure I call upon you. It doesn't matter if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, if you're, you're a... Um, carpenter, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, a preacher, it doesn't matter who you are, what can I get from them is what comes to people's minds. Now, a lot of times it's, it's subconscious, right? I'm not saying everyone goes, you know, I think I'm going to find out what you got that I want, you know? We, we, we just do that. We lock that away and it's like, what can I use from them later? And that ends up being the basis of a lot of friendships, and I would contend most friendships. But today we're going to look at a, a true fr friendship, a real friendship, an in-depth friendship, an honest biblical type friendship. Every once in a while we get those, but it is not very often in life. We have a great example we're going to look at today. Today we're going to look at the, the friendship of, of David and Jonathan. I want to see what a friendship should look like. But before we do that, we're going to back up just a little bit. Because we're going to back up, and, and before we look at, at um, the friendship between Jonathan and, and David, we're going to look at um, the cruelty of Saul. We're going to look at the cruelty of Saul. Remember, David killed Goliath, right? You remember that part, right? That well, wasn't that many weeks ago. And so um, the Israelites, when, when David killed Goliath, the Israelites now had their new hero. They had this shepherd boy that was now suddenly a superstar, right? And so they, they, um, they, they were all excited. They, they threw this, this ticker tape parade, if you will, a uh, welcome home parade to the, to the military when it came back, right? When it came back from their campaign, when, uh, when they came in, they, they were all excited about it. And they were singing a song. And the praises they were singing were what? We just read them. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten th tens of thousands, right? And um, I, I, I got to wonder, how do you suppose that made Saul feel? See, I was talking about cookies a minute ago. I'm thinking that probably burnt some cookies for Saul. I'm thinking he was a little chapter chafed, right? And in a place he didn't want to be. Saul was, he, he was so jealous, so angry about it. And so Saul responds with anger and jealousy. Saul responds with anger and jealousy to, to this ticker tape parade, to this raising up of David that the country was doing, the people were doing. And in 1 Samuel verse, uh, or 18, verse 8 and 9, it said, Saul was very angry. This refrain dis displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? <laughs> Go figure, right? The anointed one. And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. See, Saul offers David a position in his court. He offers it, you know, he has David with him all the time. But this, this position in his court, turns out that it's really, it's, it's more, it's got some occupational hazards to it. 
See, if we read uh, uh, chapters 18 through 20 of 1 Samuel, we will find that in there, there are six assassination attempts on David, all by Saul. Saul attempts to have David killed six times in those three chapters. The first two times are with a spear. Verse 10 and 11 told us about it. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Now, I've had, I've, I've had a boss. I might have had a couple bosses who weren't happy with me. I've had a boss who was mad enough he threw his hard hat in my general direction more than once. I had a boss who colored, I mean, he, he had some colorful, colorful words. I mean, he might, he might have, he, we had a pastel painting going on, right? But I never, ever, ever felt like he was trying to kill me. Ever. I, I would like to say I never deserved any of those conversations that we had. Unfortunately, I kind of deserved some, right? And I'd also like to say that I never, ever did that to anyone else. But I might have shared with you before that I've always suffered with the temper. So unfortunately, I was a good student to that boss. And so as a foreman, unfortunately, I can still remember times that I threw my hard hat, times that I was running the colorful words. But even in those times, even in those times, I never, ever desired to kill him. Ever. And I'd like to say every time they deserved it when I lost my temper with them. But then again, I, I, I promise you I won't lie to you. So I can't say that. They didn't always deserve what they got. Well, we're going to look at that today. Eventually, Saul offers David the opportunity to marry his daughter, Michelle. Now, this sounds like a great opportunity. It's like, oh, man, everything's working out great now. Until you read the stipulations that were connected to this opportunity for him to marry Saul's daughter. See, the stipulation was Saul had to go, or David had to go into the Philistine countryside. He had to attack the Philistines. And he had to bring back 100 Philistine foreskins. Right there in chapter 18. If any of y'all had have been circumcised or had a child that was circumcised, you know what I'm talking about. And most people, even if they haven't been, know what I'm talking about. Saul's requirement was that David went and took 100 Philistine foreskins, which means he killed them guys to get them. And David said, guess what? <laughs> you, you aim so low, dude. <laughs> Pun intended. And so you, and so David brought back 200. Now the key to this is this. Saul didn't do it go, yeah, because I know my boy David, he can do this. Saul did it because he was like, at least one of those 100 is bound to kill him. One of them has got to kill him. He can't defeat 100 Philistines. And instead, David took out 200 Philistines. No matter what Saul does, assassination attempt after assassination attempt, no matter what he does, his plan is foiled. Poor little jealous Saul, just things just aren't working out for him. And it kind of, if you, if you wanted to do an analogy, a, a more modern day analogy, the analogy would be David is the roadrunner and Saul's wily e. coyote. And every time he tries to drop a rock on David, it lands on Saul. Every time he tries to get uh, David to go in front of the train, Saul ends up in front of the train. When there's a cliff to go off, it's Saul, not David. Poor Saul, he's just, oh man, he's just heartbroken. David goes and he, he becomes the national hero by killing the Goli Goliath, the, the giant, right? The giant that was holding their, their army in, in fear and terror. He destroys that giant. And what's he do? He destroys the enemy of his country, and instead he ends up underneath the thumb of the enemy of his country, the Hebrew Goliath named Saul. 
Remember, God had already taken his hand off of Saul. He had already anointed David. No matter what brave deed, no matter what great deed David did, it was met by Saul. And Saul tried to crush it. It was repair, uh, repaid, I mean, with assassination attempts. And it's one thing to, when we deserve a Saul, like there was some times that maybe I deserved my Saul, right? It's one thing when you deserve your Saul, but it's a totally different thing. When you've done nothing wrong, you don't deserve a Saul, and yet you get one. It's one thing when, when you've done something, but the reality is, is that oftentimes we haven't done anything to deserve that Saul, and yet we have a Saul. David didn't deserve his Saul. You and I don't deserve our Saul most of the time either. Yet Saul's are all over our world. They're everywhere in our world. We see, we, you can see Saul's no matter where you look. I mean, you, you have, you, you have uh, uh, the father that rages against their child. You have the wife who, who has learned how to skillfully, skillfully shred their husband. You learn that that because it couldn't be the husband shredding the wife, right? And so you know, but we do. We have we we have wives who learn how to belittle their husband in such an art form, right? We have we have the the, um, the we had a president who seduced his intern. We have all the time we see this stuff. We well, we got our election process or our, our political process right now in the trash can, and everyone's tearing everyone up. We have we we have. Uh, um, all the time we're seeing in the, pay, in, in the headlines and on Facebook and wherever we're seeing over and over and over again, we're seeing where preachers, pastors have used their influence in ways they should not have used their influence. They've taken advantage of those they had authority over. They had influence over. Saul's are everywhere. This morning, I want to share with you this. Whenever God permits a Saul, whenever there's a Saul in the picture, I want you to understand this. God also provides a Jonathan. He also provides a Jonathan. Now, we've looked at the, the cruelty of Saul. We've looked at the cruelty of Saul, and now we're going to look at the loyalty of Jonathan. We're going to look at the loyalty of Jonathan. Jonathan had every reason in the world, every reason in the world to be jealous of David, to hate David, to not want David around. Think about this. Who was Jonathan? Do we remember? King Saul's boy. How does it work in kingship? The king, and then when the king's gone, what? The son rises to the throne. So David was in direct uh, um, he, he was directly the opposite of what, what uh, Jonathan should have been looking for in a best friend, right? Because David is the anointed one to take the place of Saul. So Jonathan isn't going to get the kingship. He's not going to be in charge of the Israelites. He's not going to be the man. He has every right to be angry and jealous of David. I mean, it, it, think about it. I mean, it, David's this shepherd boy. Just, it just recently he was, he was tending sheep, and all this time Jonathan's been out killing the Philistines, fighting, battling, warring for their country. Well, he, he, he should be the rightful heir to the throne, right? And yet, how does Jonathan respond? Jonathan responds with grace. Jonathan responds with grace. He's not jealous. He's not angry. He's not any of that. Verse 1 said what? It said, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan came one, became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Now, that's the NIV. The King James Version says, this, and I, I really like the way the picture this paints, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I don't see a better picture. I don't see a, 
sweeter picture, a more perfect picture of what, it, what we should be like. And this picture of how these two are is just, I just think it's beautiful. See, I don't know if you know how to knit. I don't know how to knit. I, I've seen pictures of it, right? <laughs> I've seen it on TV. And I've seen Grandma do it, right? And I've seen different people who knit. I, you hand me some yarn and a couple needles, and I'm more likely to poke my eye out than produce a scarf, okay? But I know how it works. It's interwoven. You take these two pieces and you're interweaving these pieces of yarn. You're interweaving them so much so that, so that they don't, you, you can't tell one from the other which one's which. They're, they're interwoven so, so tightly, and, and David and Jonathan become interwoven so tightly as well that, that when, you, when you pull on one, the other one feels it. It becomes one mesh, it becomes one fabric. And this friendship is developed, this friendship is created by the great weaver of them all, God. He's the one who puts these guys together. If we look at it, you want to look at the depth of this, their relationship, verse 3 and 4 shows, And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. He loved him as, how does the Lord's prayer go? Forgive me my trespasses, I forgive those who trespass against me, Right? How is, how is our love supposed to be? We're supposed to love our, what did what, what Jesus, Jesus say the two great commandments were? Love God and what was that other one? Love our neighbor as ourself. That's exactly what they're doing right here back in 1 Samuel. He loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Now, there's a lot of people who make a lot of promises, aren't there? And there's a lot of people who make, I mean, everyone promises, right? But a very high percentage of people make a promise, and that's not what comes, comes out of the situation. It, uh, they don't produce on it, right? They don't follow through on it. it, it it's, it's part of the problem that why people walk away from the church, in all honesty, is people are tired of being lied to. People are tired of the hypocrisy. Well, they said this, but then they lived that. The church said they loved me, and then they told me I needed to clean this up before I could be there. The church said they loved me, but when I needed it, they walked away. There's a lot of people who make promises, and they don't follow through on them. Jonathan didn't do that. Jonathan made a promise, and he kept that promise. He promised that pro- he made that promise, and he sealed that promise. He sealed that promise with by by giving him by giving David his robe. Not only was it going to be his friend forever, right? Not only were they knit together, but he gives David his robe. And what else does he give him? His tunic. What else does he give him? His sword. His bow. His belt. Hours before, David was a, was, was a shepherd in Bethlehem, right? I mean, it was not long before this that David's tending the sheep, right? I want to help you with a little visual here. See, David was the eighth son of Jesse. Remember, he was, he was what? He was the lesser son, right? In all fashions as far as Jesse was concerned. David was the least of the children. And being that, David was probably wearing his uh, old tattered Striper T-shirt. Striper's a Christian rock band, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> well, I didn't want to do Iron Maiden or something. but um, So he's wearing his tattered Striper T-shirt, right? He's wearing his holy blue jeans, and I don't mean, oh, these are the ones I'm wearing to church today. I mean the ones that holes in the jeans, right? He's wearing his work boots that got holes in the soles. I mean, poor David, he had a hole in his soul, man. He's wearing these tattered, torn clothes. He's, he's not wearing nice clothes. And so Jonathan, can't, he doesn't want to see David. This is the hero. This is God's anointed one. And Jonathan doesn't want to see him in the rags of a poor kid, of the less, least of these. So he clothes him. 
He provides clothes for him. Now, Jonathan, I mean, let's be honest. Jonathan didn't have to give him his own clothes, but he did, right? So he gives him the clothes of a prince over the clothes of a shepherd. So Jonathan makes, a, makes David a promise and, he, and that he would stick with him forever. After he makes that promise, he follows it up with provision. And with that provision, he also offers David protection. He gives David protection. Every time David's in trouble, Jonathan is there to bail him out. Jonathan is there to protect him. Even those times when Jonathan's father, Saul, is the one trying to kill David. Even those times when Jonathan's father, Saul, is the one trying to do harm to David. Jonathan promises his protection and provides it. So he gave David a promise, provision, and protection. And the Bible tells us there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. David found that friend, didn't he? He found that friend in Jonathan. Right now, you, you might be going through something, and you're like, man, I could really use a Jonathan. Man, I'm struggling. I could use a Jonathan. I've, I've got Saul's all around me, and I really need a Jonathan. I want you to know that you have a Jonathan. I want you to know that we have a Jonathan. We, we have a Jonathan. We have a Jonathan, and his name is Jesus Christ. We all have a Jonathan, and his name is Jesus Christ. Everything that Jonathan did for David, Jesus does for you, and he does for me. Everything. Only difference is, he goes to the nth degree, farther than Jonathan ever could. Jesus made a promise to us, and we need to remember, remember this promise. We need to never forget this promise. Jesus promised us in Matthew 28, verse 20, he said, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus promised to be with us forever and ever. Amen. Jesus will not, has not, will not back out of that promise. Jesus has always been there for us. He will always be there for us. He is our Jonathan. Even if you don't see a Jonathan in front of you, even if you can't go, there's my Jonathan, he's there. Jesus will always be your Jonathan. He's never broken a promise and he won't. See, Jonathan gave the clothes off his back. Now, Jonathan could have easy, Jonathan could have, when he was offering those clothes, he could have easy, he's the prince, right? He's the king's boy, literally. And he could have easy said, Bob, take that uniform off and give it to David. He's a better fighter than you. Bob, and he doesn't. Instead, Jonathan, in front of his entire army, Jonathan takes off his own robe and gives it to David. Jonathan takes off his own tunic and gives it to David. He takes, he takes his own bow and gives to David, his own sword, his own belt. He gave him the best that he had. And Jesus does that for you and me each and every day. Every moment of every day. Jesus stripped off his own righteousness. He stripped off his own righteousness that we might be wrapped in the white robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus stripped off his own righteousness that we might wear his righteousness, that we might receive his righteousness. We need to never forget that Jesus is allowing us to dress in his righteousness. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Jonathan equipped David, right? Jesus equips us. Ephesians 6, 11 says... Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Put on the full armor of God so you can take the stand against the devil's schemes. How many of you remember the God's Armor series that we did? 
we did a while back, right? And so uh, we talked about that, didn't we? We talked about the armor that God provides for us, the armor that we're to put on each and every day. We must put on that armor of God each and every day. Do we remember what all that armor was? I heard some whispering. Um, what, what was the helmet? Salvation. What was the breastplate? What was the shield? The sword. Yep, this, which is, and not everyone remembers that, but spirit, remember, the sword of the spirit is the sword of the word, God's Bible, right? That's our, that's our sword is the, is the scriptures, okay? How about the belt and the shoes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus provides everything we need. He gives us the provision and the protection that we need. We need to never, ever, ever forget that. Through Him, we can do all things. Jesus said, when He sent, his, when he sent the Holy Spirit down to His disciples, He said, you'll be able to do greater things than I. We have His power within each and every one of us when we accept Him into our heart and we embrace Him and we ask Him in. And we allow Him to do what He desires to do within each and every one of us. We have our Jonathan, and His name is Jesus Christ. Proverbs 18, verse 21. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You have a friend in Jesus. We sang that song as kids, didn't we? What a friend we have in Jesus, right? And he, w- he, he made a promise. He's provided. He's given all the provision we need, and He protects us day in and day out. We must never forget. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He was the same yesterday as He is today, and He will be tomorrow. We are protected under the armor of God. We just have to put it on. Are we putting our armor on every day? That's what we have to do. We have a friend. We have a Jonathan, and his name is Jesus Christ. Please join me before the throne. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you so much. Father, you you, you sent your son for us. We don't deserve him. We didn't then, we don't now. Father, we're, we're so... Man, we're so messed up, jacked up. We don't even know whether we're coming or going. We don't. Every time we, we we're, we're with people, we just my goodness, we just we just we're bad. Father, we, so many of us are are nonstop just looking for what can we get from them. So many of us are angry and and, and jealous of those around us. So many of us are trying to throw spears of hatred at people. So many of us are trying to trying to trying to assassinate the person near us. Whether it's assassinate them in employment or assassinate them in real, it doesn't matter. It's a sad, we, we try to take from them nonstop. Father, we forget that we, we've got Jonathan. And he goes by the name of Jesus Christ. You sent him. And he said, yeah, Dad, here I am. Let's do this. He didn't squawk, he didn't balk, he came. He came for us even though we didn't deserve it. He came to save us even though we didn't deserve it. He came to clothe us even though we didn't deserve it. He came to promise us even though we didn't deserve it. He came to protect us even though we didn't deserve it. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful. And I ask that you would break each and every heart, that that would sink into those cracks, into those breaks, that that would fill the voids, dear Lord. That love, that promise, that love, that provision, that protection, that love of Jesus Christ, that love that you have for us, Father. Father, as we go into this week of Thanksgiving, we're so thankful for so many things. And, and this year, I mean, we're thankful for a, for a little time with loved ones because of the stuff that's been going on. And Father, I just, I'm so, so thankful, so thankful for your son, all your provisions 
And Father, as we go into this week, as we get together in whatever size group that is, and there's people, there's people in this country that, my goodness, they made it illegal to get together with their families. Don't get together with your loved ones. Let's keep them apart. Father, I ask that even in those times, Father, that you're with them and they understand and they're thankful. They're thankful for what you've done for us. And those of us who can get together, Father, I ask you to help us to remember how thankful, how blessed we are. How blessed we are. Father, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not thankful for a turkey. I'm not thankful for sweet potatoes. I'm not thankful for a pie. I'm thankful for the love. The love you have for us. The blood your son shed for us. The grave he defeated. Satan that he defeated for us. Thank you for the protection that he provides for us all the time. And the provision of the armor that you give us, dear Lord. And I pray that you help us to put that armor on each and every day, each and every day. Maybe we haven't been doing so good at it right now, but Father, I ask you to help us get better at it. Help us get better at it. Put one piece on at a time, one piece at a time, one piece at a time. Get on that helmet, get on that breastplate, get on that, get that shield, pick it up, pick up that sword, put on that belt, put on them shoes. Father, I ask that you help us to be diligent in that, that we remain focused on you, focused on you in when we need things, but focused on you more in being thankful for everything you've already provided. Just thankful, Father. I just pray these things in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I can't believe this is week six already of King David. So next week we wrap up King David with a, a message about seeing God. And so, God bless. Love you. Have a happy. But I
as you call me, deeper still as you Uh, so I knew I knew I was forgetting at least one announcement, and that is that the women's life group is today. So the Bible study is this afternoon. So just uh, just remember that if you're you can join online, they they do the Zoom thing too, right? You're still doing that, right? And so um, so they're doing the Zoom say, thing if you can't be in house, but otherwise they'll be they'll be here at the church um, at four thirty, four 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 o'clock, please. Um, so if you want to join that, um, you even if you haven't been there, but you want to, you know, I've been thinking about it and I just I keep forgetting, um, there's the opportunity. So anyway, that's this afternoon. God bless. <laughs>